I'm delighted to be here today in Ondo State for the Ondo State edition of the Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprises Clinic. Let me take this opportunity to extend my sincere congratulations to my brother and friend, Governor Oluwarotimi Akredolu, SAN, and his team for their continuing hard work and commitment to the development of the state. Ondo State is well known across Nigeria for not just business, but for its agricultural potentials. It is the cocoa capital of Nigeria, responsible for as much as 40% of Nigeria's annual cocoa output. Ondo State is also a major producer of oil palm. It is also home to one of the largest deposits of bitumen in the world. Indeed, there's a lot for this state to be proud of and to seek to exploit for economic growth and for the prosperity of the people. The federal government is fully committed to working with the Ondo State government to ensure that not only are these potentials exploited to the fullest, but that they also translate into a better life for all who live and work and do business here in this state. Indeed, in the last three years, we have demonstrated an abiding commitment to facilitating genuine efforts by all states of the Federation to attract investment, to diversify their economic base, and to create jobs and economic opportunities for their people. So far, we have held 13 editions of the MSME clinics in various states across the six geopolitical zones of Nigeria. And we are today holding the 14th edition of the MSME Clinic here in Nondo State. And this is further demonstration of our commitment to ensuring that small businesses, market women, and artisans have an opportunity or have several opportunities to do business and to do business successfully. It's of course well known that MSMEs or small businesses and micro businesses have tended to be neglected in this country over the years as a result of the competing priorities, as well as a tendency to discount their contribution to the national economy. As individual units, small businesses may appear to be slight, but together they account for as much as 50% of Nigeria's GDP and over 80% of our labor force. Clearly, they are an important part of the national economy, and they should be treated as such more so now that it has become inevitable for us to look inwards to become a country that is able to grow what we eat and produce what we consume. The MSME clinics were conceived with this in mind and designed to bring government closer to the people by assembling in one place all the regulatory agencies whose work affects the business experience of small and medium scale businesses. This affords MSMEs an efficient platform to which they can bring their business-related problems for the intervention of the regulatory agencies for solution outside the formal and sometimes intimidating offices of these agencies. At the same time, gaining access to all the agencies in one place saves the small businesses the travel time and the cost of having to seek out different agencies. The MSME clinics have also enabled regulatory agencies to gain a better understanding of the difficulties that small businesses face and has helped them to become better prepared to offer value to these small businesses. For instance, several agencies have reduced the cost and timeliness for service deliveries to small businesses. Since the launch of this program last year, it has been easier for small businesses to access funds because the Bank of Industry, the Development Bank of Nigeria, and the Nigerian Export and Import Bank, Nexim, have used the clinics to increase not just awareness of their products, but also to make available credit to participating businesses. NAVDAC has made it easier to do business by reducing the cost and the waiting time for product registration for MSMEs. And NAFDAC is here today. I want a lot of the businesses that are looking for NAFDAC registration to meet with these NAFDAC officials today and find out what exactly it is that is causing the delays that they may be experiencing. 
because it's important for you to have a NAFDAQ number, especially if you are going to trade in good shops or if you want to export what you are selling. Processes that used to take as much as eight months now take three months. The Corporate Affairs Commission, which registers businesses and companies, now registers businesses within 48 hours and also carry, carries out registration at reduced rates. During this clinic, during this clinic, the Corporate Affairs Commission is also registering companies and is ready to do so, especially at the, this reduced price. The Nigerian Export Promotion Council, NEPC, and the Standards Organization of Nigeria have both slashed their charges on various products and services in order to support MSMEs. To foster continuity after the clinics, at least five state governments have set up one-stop shops that bring all the relevant agencies together in one place so as to enable small businesses to access their services on an ongoing basis with relative ease. And this is very important, and we hope that we'll be able to do this in Ondo State so that the state has in one place, in one office, they have NAVDAC, they have SON, they have the CAC and others in one place so that small businesses can go there to do their businesses. Another idea emerging from the clinics is the establishment of shared facilities for small businesses based on part a partnership between the federal government and the state governments and the bank of industry. The idea is that the small businesses that do not have financial capacity to purchase their own equipment should be able to walk into a fully equipped cluster, a facility that has all of the equipment that they may need. So for example, we will, we will try and see a situation where if you make furniture or if you're a tailor, we provide a cluster with equipment and with power so that you can come there and do your business. Now this is supposed to be some kind of assistance for those who do small businesses but cannot afford to own their own spaces. So these clusters are meant to create that opportunity. Where possible, the facility will already have been certified by the relevant agencies so that it just makes it easier for people to do businesses. The MSME clinics also afford us the opportunity to widen the reach of the Government Enterprises and Empowerment Program, GEEP, the microcredit component of our social investment program. Today, during this Ondo State MSME clinics, Jeep will be expanding its footprint in Ondo State and looking at how to expand those opportunities and to pre-qualify beneficiaries. Ondo State is, of course, already benefiting substantially from the entire suite of social investment programs, Jeep, the National School Feeding Program, NPAR, and the Conditional Cash Transfer Scheme. This state has 5,271 volunteers in the first batch of the empire. 24 of them in NBuild, its accompanying program for artisanal skills related to the building industry. The total resources that we, have been, that we spent in Ondo State, and, which we, and we, of course we continue to, in, uh, to invest in this state through our social investment program. And I think that one of the most important things that we must bear in mind is that the whole idea of the, of the social investment scheme of the government is to ensure that people who do not have opportunities are given those opportunities. If you look at our budget, we provided 500 billion for the whole country. We have not been able to fund it to the tune of 500 billion. We don't have that much money. In fact, what, has been, what we've tried to spend so far is about 80 billion in all. But we intend to, look, as, 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 we, as our income increases, we intend to improve and continue to expand. That is why so far across the country, we've done only 200,000 empire volunteers. We still intend to do 300,000 more. And we are watching out for that. The gentleman who has a question there is in the second batch. That second batch, is, there are so many across the country as well. They are the next 300,000. It's very important for us to bear in mind that this government is earning 60% less than previous governments earned, previous federal government. Despite that, we are spending more on the people, we are investing more in the people. For the first time, for the first time in the history of this country, we are putting 1.3 trillion on infrastructure, 1.3 trillion on infrastructure. 
A lot of people, sometimes, you know, I, I, I was reading a comment today. Somebody, one, uh, somebody was making a comment about how well the government has done or how well it hasn't done. And I said, one thing that you must understand, first of all, about this government is that it's a government that wants to be honest with the people. If a government wants to be honest with the people, look at the money you have. If you have, if you have one billion, spend that one billion on the people. Don't steal it. Spend it on the people. The difference between us and any previous government is that we're not going to steal the money. We spend the money on the people. That's the difference. And I want to assure you, I want to assure you, for example, look at the Lagos Kano, look at the Lagos Kano Bridge, the Lagos Kano Railway. They've been talking about Lagos Kano Railway for almost 10 years. They never built it. Now we have put money into it, despite the fact that we're earning 60% less. We have started building it from a papa port. Before the end of this year, we'll go all the way to Ibado in that Lagos Kano Railway. We are building the second Niger Bridge. The last government, they talked about it. They always talk about these things, but they never started. They never built it. Now we are building, now we are building with 60% less income. We are building it. This, all these things we are doing, all these things we are doing, the Empower, homegrown school feeding. Homegrown school feeding is feeding primary school children all across Nigeria. 7.6 million children today have been fed every single day. When we were earning $100 a barrel of oil, there was no homegrown school feeding. Today we are earning between $60 and $70 a barrel. We are feeding children in schools. What happened to the money before now? So I think it's very important for us to bear in mind, and one of the reasons why we hold ourselves to account, why the vice president of the country will come today to, uh, to, to this meeting, a town hall meeting, where you can ask your questions. It's because we want to be held to account. The money does not belong to us. The money belongs to the people. It is taxpayers' money. And we want to be held to account. Those, those who say, those who say that they want to see, that they want to see performance must see it in the works that have been done. Look at Lagos Ibadan Expressway. How many years? Since 1999, they've been talking about Lagos Ibadan Expressway. They haven't built it. People who are complaining today, who are in government from 1999, 16 years, they never built the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Now we are putting the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Now we are building it. So I think Nigeria's problems are not many if the money is not stolen. If we don't steal the money, if we spend the money, we will achieve the results for the people. This government is committed to ensuring that the money is given to the people and that the people use the money. That is one of the reasons why corruption is fighting back. And they are fighting back very desperately because they want to come back to, to, to do what they used to do before. But God forbid, it will not happen again. The people of this land say that we will, we are, we will hold ourselves to account. We we'll hold ourselves to account we have promised the people of this country that we will lead honestly. The people will experience honest leadership. It may be difficult, it may be tough, but this country is moving forward by the grace of the Almighty God. Finally, let me just say, finally, let me just say that every inch of the way as we make progress, we believe that the country, a country such as this, a country as great as Nigeria, there should be no reason why our young people should experience difficulty in finding opportunities. No reason. Opportunities will abound in, ind in industry. Opportunities will abound in agriculture. They have the devices they have, and we're putting training on those, we're, we're putting training materials on those devices and also on the platforms. It's because we believe that young people have to be retrained for the future. The future lies in technology. It lies in entrepreneurship. It lies in great ideas. And we are committed to training and retraining our young people so that they will be competitive in, in, the, in the next 10 years. They will be even better, they, they will be even better than, many, than, than the young people in different parts of the world. We are committed to ensuring that this country is not the way that it used to be. This country has to change. I, am in, I used to be a university teacher, and I served in the, in the university for many years. Every year, we will say 
Something has to happen in this country. Something has to change in this country. Why will it not change? We are here now, and by the grace of God, we will all see the changes that we've been praying for by the honest leadership that we have put in place in this country. Money will not be stolen. We're not going to let anybody steal. Anybody who steals money. Some of them say, oh, we haven't seen anybody being thrown in jail, but they're on trial. We will continue to arrest them, put them on trial. Even if the courts waste time, whoever wastes time will still put them on trial. But we'll not allow anybody to run away with the money. The money of this country belongs to its people, and its people must enjoy that money. Thank you very much. God